Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Today we're going to be evaluating the Fresnel integrals. Um, the Fresnel integrals are the integral from zero to infinity of cosine x squared dx, and also the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x squared dx. Um, and we're going to solve them by first starting with the integral of uh, e to the negative ix squared dx from 0 to infinity. And the reason we're going to do that is because if you use uh, uh, what's it, Euler's formula, um, this e to the negative ix squared dx can be written as cosine of x squared minus i sine of x squared. And that's because um, Euler's formula states that the integral, I'm, I'm sorry, Euler's formula states that e to the i theta is equal to cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. In this case, our theta would be negative x squared. So plugging that into Euler's formula, you would get cosine of negative x squared. And since cosine is an even function, that's simply cosine of x squared. And then you would get plus i sine of negative x squared. And because sine is an odd function, that would equal negative i sine of x squared. So you can see that's, that's equivalent right there. And we'll be using that to solve these integrals right there. Um, a quick note, uh, I pretty much pulled uh, this idea straight from the channel Flammable Maths. Um, this is going to be a much quicker version of it. I'm not going to be going through a lot of the uh, a lot of the work that he did. I'll be skipping a lot of the um, you know the the more detailed steps and just give you a kind of a cliff notes version of his video. Um, but I do want to credit him for that because this is not my solving it this way is not uh, my idea. Um, I will post a link to the video in the description. So anyway, to get started with this, what we'll do is we will create a function of t closely resemble resembling our integral i. And it doesn't resemble it as closely as in some of my uh, previous videos where we literally just insert a, uh, a new parameter t somewhere in there. For instance, like just putting a t in front of that x squared. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to replace that infinity up there with a t and then square the whole thing. So we have f of t being equal to the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative ix squared dx, and then all of that squared. And then we note that if we evaluate our function of t, where t is equal to zero, we will get zero. Because if you plug in zero for that upper bound right there, you'll just have zero to zero. And uh, that would evaluate to zero. And we'll also note that if we plug in infinity for our t, we'll get i squared, because we will end up with exactly this thing right here, squared. So the next step, um, like usual, is we are going to take a derivative with respect to t of our function of t. And we don't really need to use the Leibniz rule to do that in this case, um, because you'll notice that with that integral written this way, that really is just um, one way of writing the antiderivative of e to the negative i t squared. And you learn that in first, uh, you know, I think first semester calculus. Um, it's just a, that's a, uh, kind of a, a strange way to write the indefinite integral of uh, e to the negative i t squared dt. Um, and the reason for that is uh, it comes from the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. 
Um, so we'll, we don't know what the antiderivative of e to the ix squared dx is, but we can just write it as like capital F of x. So we'll know that um, the, uh, if you evaluate this integral like normal, as if you're evaluating a definite integral, you would get capital F of x, which is the antiderivative of this thing, evaluated at t. In other words, you'd get capital F of t. And then, um, you know, you'd, you'd also get minus capital F of zero, but that would be a constant. Okay, so you get big F of t plus some constant. Um, and since we're taking, um, so yeah, you, you'd have basically the antiderivative of this function except evaluated at t. And we'll use that later because we're going to be, well, we'll use it right now because we're going to be taking a derivative of it. So anyway, let's use the chain rule on that. We're taking a derivative with respect to t of f of t. Obviously, on this side, that just gives us f prime of t. And on the right-hand side, we need to use the chain rule. Um, so we have a power right there. So we bring down the power and then subtract 1 from it. That would give us 2 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative ix squared dx times the derivative with respect to t of the inner function. And the derivative uh, with respect to t of the inner function is the derivative with respect to t of big F of t. Um, so if you take the derivative of an antiderivative, you get the original function. So that would simply be e to the negative i t squared. And I hope that makes sense to everybody. So, going over it once more, we have 2 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative ix squared dx, and that's right here, 2 integral 0 to t of e to the negative ix squared. And then we have the derivative of the antiderivative of e to the negative i t squared, which is simply e to the negative i t squared, and that's right there. And of course, all that is uh, evaluated with respect to x. Our next step is we just pull out a t squared right outside of this parentheses right here. And what you get is 2 integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i t squared times x squared over t squared plus 1 dx. Now we make a substitution where our new variable u is equal to x over t, thereby making dx equal to t du. Stepping over here and plugging in our substitution, we get that f prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1. The reason it changes to, for, uh, to 1 is because if you insert t for your x right here, which is what we're doing, you'll get that u is equal to t over t, which is just 1. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of 2t e to the negative i t squared times u squared plus 1, because this is simply u squared in our substitution. And then du. And I hope that, I hope that makes sense to all of you. Okay. Now, the next step... Um, this step kind of involves a lot of work, but I'm just going to skip right to the punchline. Uh, this right here, 2t e to the negative i t squared uh, times u squared plus 1 is the derivative with respect to t of this thing right here. Uh, it's the partial derivative with respect to t of this thing right here, and you can go ahead and verify that. So we could have written that as integral from 0 to infinity of the partial derivative with respect to t of i e to the negative i t squared times u squared plus 1 all over u squared plus 1. And then using the Leibniz rule, um, we can bring that partial derivative outside of the integral sign um, as, a, as a normal derivative. 
um, you know, it's it's just a reversal of the uh, of the Leibniz rule. Normally, we would be bringing that inside as a partial derivative, but since it's valid to do that, it's valid the other way too. Um, so yeah, so now we have f prime of t being equal to the derivative with respect to t of some function of t, and I hope you agree that this is a function of t. Um, so that, that makes it very, very easy to find f of t because we're literally saying that the derivative with respect to t is, uh, is equal to, so f prime of t is equal to the derivative with respect to t of some function of t. So you integrate both sides and you get that f of t is equal to just this thing right here. Because if you integrate f prime of t, of course you get f of t. And if you integrate with respect to t, a derivative with respect to t, you just get the original thing yourself uh, itself, um, plus a constant of integration. So we have that f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of i e to the negative i t squared u squared plus 1, all over u squared plus 1 du plus c. And I already have that c uh, crossed out. Um, and, and just set it equal to negative i pi over 4. And I can do that by plugging in the fact that our function of t evaluated at t equals 0 is equal to 0. So that would mean that 0 is equal to the integral from, uh, from 0 to 1 of i times e to the negative i 0. So you can see that this, this whole top of that fraction right there will simply evaluate to i if you plug in t is equal to 0. So we have 0 equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of i over u squared plus 1 du. And that integral evaluates to i pi over 4. So we have that 0 is equal to i pi over 4 plus c, giving us a value for c of negative i pi over 4, which I have written right there. So now we have a final expression for um, our f of t. So now that makes it very easy for us to find i squared. All we have to do is literally plug in infinity into our f of t, and we will have the value for i squared. And from there, it's simply taking the square root of it to find i. Okay, so we plug in infinity for our t, and you end up with e to the negative infinity, which is zero. So this whole thing right here is zero. Finally, giving us i squared equal to negative i pi over four, written right there. Taking the square root on both sides, we get that i is equal to the square root of negative i pi over four. Taking it a little bit further, we get that that is equal to the square root of pi over 2 times the square root of negative i. Um, and the next step, we simply replace the square root of negative i with the square root of e to the negative i pi over 2, because um, that is what negative i is in um, complex exponential form. It is e to the negative i pi over 2. I'm not going to uh, get into any great detail on that. Um, you kind of just have to know that. Um, or I'm assuming you know that. Um, so one more step here, we get that i is equal to the square root of pi over 2 times the square root of this, which is e to the negative i pi over 4. In the next step, I, um, I convert e to the negative i pi over 4 to its uh, I, don't know, I think you call it its, its rectangular representation, where you just split it up into its real and imaginary parts. And what you do, uh, what, what you get if you do that, is that e to the negative i pi over 4 is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 minus i times the square root of 2 over 2. And that's it. We have solved i. 
But that wasn't our original goal. Our original goal was actually to solve the Fresnel integrals, which are these. But you can see from here, it's, it's very easy. Um, it's very easy to get these because we have that our I is equal to something real minus something imaginary. We also have that our I is equal to something real minus something imaginary. So we simply match up the real and imaginary parts. And what you do if you get that is that the integral from zero to infinity is equal to the real part of this thing. The real part of this thing is simply square root of pi over two times the square root of two over two. And I believe that, is, let's see, that would be the square root of two pi over 16, which, hmm, not good at doing math in my head. Let's see. So you'd get the square root of two pi all over four, and that's good enough. So we have that the integral from zero to infinity of cosine of x squared dx is equal to the square root of two pi all over four. We also have um, that the integral from zero to infinity of negative i sine, uh, um, sine x squared dx would be equal to negative i square root of 2 pi over 4. Um, you know, going dividing both sides of that equality by i will give us that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared dx is also equal to this. It's equal to the same thing. And I'm just, like I said, I'm just matching up the real and imaginary parts of this with the real and imaginary parts of this. And that's a valid thing to do. Um, so yeah, that's it. The uh, Fresnel integrals evaluated with um, Feynman integration. Um, again, I did not come up with this method myself. Uh, this was um, taken directly from the channel Flammable Maths. Uh, I highly recommend you check out his channel. He does a lot of really, really crazy integrals. And I've copied him several times on my channel um, and just kind of given a quicker version of, of, his, of his process. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, for now, integrals evaluated with Feynman integration. Hope you enjoyed that.